The word dhamma comes from a root that means something that maintains itself. It's something that upholds other things. So you should remember that as you go through life, you're being upheld by the dhamma. It's there to tap into whenever you need it. It's just that we go off in other directions. Our desires pull us one way, the way things are is pulling us another way. And of course there's going to be suffering. But if you learn to look at the way things are, you can find, okay, there is a way out of the suffering here. Now you can feel upheld by the Dharma, as long as you uphold the Dharma, too. You hold to the Dharma in your thoughts, in your words, in your deeds. It's going to protect you. There's a phrase in Tamo Hawe Rakati Tamajaring, the Dharma protects those who practice the Dharma. So always keep that point in mind. It's there to tap into at all times, because it's what upholds everything around us. And it protects us when we actually listen to it and put it into practice. Because the Dharma is just not just a matter of words in books or words in a Dharma talk. It's the qualities of the mind that you develop. There's some qualities of mind, like greed, aversion, delusion, don't uphold much of anything. But qualities like mindfulness, compassion, alertness. Goodwill, discernment. These things keep you safe. They provide a good foundation. It's like a floor on a raised, one of those raised high houses up on stilts. If the floor is good, you can walk anywhere on the floor and not be afraid of it. If it turns out that there's some rotten spots in the boards, you can step on those. You can your leg can go right through. Greed and aversion and delusion are like the rotten spots. They can't uphold much of anything. It's the good qualities of the mind that keep you upheld. So if you uphold them, they'll look after you and protect you from falling and to all the sorts of suffering that people ordinarily fall into because they don't really pay careful attention as to what's dharma and what's not. 